everything is going to be all right. We got God on our side. And God in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything is going to be all right. Amen. 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 Giving honor to God, our Father, our Savior, our all in all, uh, to Bishop Starnes and Mrs. Starnes in their absence, to Reverend Wanda Cuthbertson, to Reverend Alicia Starnes, to uh, Sister Taisha Cuthbertson, and to the family and the members and the officers of the Wesley AME Zion Church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. The scripture text that was read earlier, I want to lift up uh, verses 1 through 6 from the New Living uh, Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring and mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of, to of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At the time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Amen. Today, I want to share from the subject of the true experience of Pentecost. The true experience of Pentecost. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your power being present with us. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to lift up the word. And we just ask God that you would empower it now. Empower your word, Father. Empower me, Father. Fill me afresh, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit. Anoint me afresh, O oh God, for your service. And then use me, Father, for your will and your glory. God, I ask you to have your way now. Have your way in this moment. Have your way in the service. And then, Father, we pray that you would open our ears and help us to listen. Open our eyes, for we want to see Jesus. Then open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. The true experience of Pentecost. When we look at today, and this is Pentecost Sunday, we often associate it with the coming of the power of God or the coming of the Holy Spirit. But it has its origins back in the Old Testament. Yes, in the Old Testament, you had the seven week celebrations known as the Feast of Harvest and uh, the Day of First Fruits. It's in the completion of the seven weeks or the seven Sabbaths that we find ourselves at Pentecost Sunday. Yes, 50 days after Resurrection Sunday. Yes, it's been 50 days ago that we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been 50 days ago that we celebrated his, his dying on the cross at Calvary and then his rising from the grave, giving us the opportunity, giving us the ability and the privilege to have eternal life. For if it had not been for Christ going to the cross at Calvary, if it had not been for him dying in our place, and it had not been for his resurrection, we won't stand a chance. So we should be grateful and thankful that as we come to Pentecost Sunday, we just look back over the last 50 days and realize that we've celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, I want us to understand a true Pentecost experience position us in Christ and empowers us for God's purpose. Yes, a true Pentecost experience positions us in Christ 
and empowers us for God's purpose. When we think about experiencing the true Pente Pentecost, or Pentecost, we got to make sure that we, first of all, are positioned in Christ. In order to experience Pentecost at its truest, at its fullness, we've got to make sure that we are positioned in Christ. What do you mean, Jones, positioned in Christ? If you notice, the text will tell us that the disciples were in one accord in one room. Yes, they were in the upper room waiting on the fulfillment of the word that Jesus spoke to them. If you go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you'll find that Jesus said to the disciples, Go and wait in Jerusalem until the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes. Yes, when he comes upon you, he'll give you the power to be my witnesses. Yes, when we understand that he's given the power by the Holy Spirit, it's a word that Jesus has given to the disciples to follow. Yes, it's that word that came into their lives that gave them the ability to experience being positioned in Christ. Yes, it starts with a word. Yes, they've been called to one place and, and they've been called to that one place to be obedient to God, to be obedient to Jesus Christ. He said, if you just go there and you wait, I'll give you power when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Yes, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon them that day of Pentecost, it was because they waited patiently and obediently on the word of God. That they were called into one place to be in obedience to that word that Jesus gave them in Acts chapter 1. And as they were remaining in the obedient place and they were remaining in the place that God had called them to, they were there waiting on the coming of the Holy Spirit. My question for you today, are you ready to experience Pentecost? Or, or have you experienced Pentecost already in your life? Every believer should have already experienced Pentecost in their lives. And in fact, every believer should experience Pentecost on a daily basis. I know we celebrate Pentecost once a year, and I know we celebrate it 50 days after the Resurrection Sunday. But I declare to us that every Sunday, every day ought to be a Pentecost day. Yes, we ought to experience Pentecost every day of our lives. We shouldn't have to wait for once a year to experience Pentecost because we can experience the true power and the purpose of Pentecost every day of our lives. When I think about what Pentecost really means, it's about gathering around the word of God and it's about being obedient to that word of God and it's about exercising faith in that word. Yes, it was the disciples waiting obediently and patiently on that word to be fulfilled. They had to wait in faith. Yes, it was the faith that they had in the words that Jesus Christ spoke to them on that day that they waited for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to come. Are you waiting patiently for God to empower you? Are you waiting patiently for God to send his Holy Spirit into your life to empower you for a purpose and a, and a reason that he wants to use you? Are you waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon you? Yes, the same method of positioning in Christ is for us today too. We have to make sure that we are positioned in Christ. And it starts with a word. It starts with obedience to that word. And it starts with faith in Jesus Christ. When we put faith in the word that God has given us, and when we exercise obedience in that word and to that word, and we find ourselves operating in faith in Jesus Christ and to the word of God, we can find ourselves being positioned in Christ. And when I'm positioned in Christ, I understand that Christ is there to cover me in his righteousness. When I'm positioned in Christ, God no longer sees the sinful humanity that I display, but he sees the righteousness of Christ because I've been positioned in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit that helps me to be positioned in Christ it, because it was the Holy Spirit that called me to salvation. It was the Holy Spirit that gave the word for me to hear to bring about salvation in my life. It was the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that helps me to obey that word that I received. And it's the faith that I exercise in God that the Holy Spirit helps me to have that I might experience the fullness and the true experience of Pentecost. Yes, when I understand that Pentecost is not just something I can experience on a yearly basis or on a weekly basis, but Pentecost is something that I can experience each and every day of my life because every day ought to be lived positioned in 
Christ. Every day I wake up to position myself in Christ. Every day I arise and get out of bed and I make sure that I position myself in Christ before I meet my day. Don't you want to make sure that you're positioned in Christ before you meet the world? Because there's a whole lot of stuff out there waiting on us when we leave out of the door every morning. So make sure that you're positioned in Christ as you make your way out the door. Make sure you take the time to make sure you're properly positioned in Christ so that you can hear a word from the Lord, so that you can be obedient to that word and that you can move by faith as you make your way out into the world. Yes, but I think about Paul and I think Paul is a great example of what it means to be positioned in Christ. See, he answered the call. And yes, when he answered the call, he became obedient to that word that Christ had given him on the road to Damascus. And it was in faith that Paul had to travel a few days until he received his sight again because the scales had come over his eyes and he had become blinded, but he had the trust that God was leading him. He had the trust that God was guiding him. And as Paul found himself obedient to the word, as he found himself obeying the call and receiving that call, and as he found himself positioned in Christ now, he was no longer positioned in the religion church. He was no longer positioned with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was no longer positioned in that thing that they were calling worship. But he was now positioned in Christ, the true God. He was positioned in a way that he could now experience experienced Pentecost in his life. What was Paul experiencing? He was experiencing being positioned in Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to understand that we've got to be positioned in Christ Jesus. If we're not positioned in Christ Jesus, then we're just wasting our time. It starts with us being positioned in Christ Jesus. But if we're going to also experience the true experience of Pentecost, we got to experience being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes, we got to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In verses two through four, it tells us that a noise began to come and it said a strong wind began to blow. And as that noise began to show up, it said that the power of God fell on that room that day. And it said as the, the rushing mighty wind came in and as they began to experience the power of God, coming in all of his glory. Those 120 that were gathered in that upper room, the power of God descended upon them. And it said that the power began to lay and lie upon and touch each and every one of them as a fire, a tongue of fire. It came down and they experienced the power of God. It was the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was now ascended into the heavenly realm. But he said, when I ascend, I've got to go up so that the comforter may come. What Jesus was simply trying to get them to understand was, if I don't go away, you don't get that which you're going to need after I leave. So Jesus said, I got to ascend. And, and as he ascended, the power of the Holy Spirit fell in the room that day. The power of the Holy Spirit was sent by God because it was now time for the Holy Spirit to descend into the earth realm. It was now time for the Holy Spirit to begin to indwell each believer. Every person that puts their faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in and begins to dwell on the inside of it. It was time for the Holy Spirit to empower the people of God. Yes, we need to understand that we need the empowerment of God and we need that empowerment each and every day of our lives. Yes, I know we try to celebrate Pentecost once a year, but again, we have to make sure that we understand Pentecost is something that we need to experience every day. And in case you don't understand, that means we got to experience the power of God every day. Yes, we can't just experience the power of God once a year or once every seven days. We've got to make sure that we're experiencing the power of God every day of our lives. Have you experienced the power of God today? Have you allowed God's presence to come in today? Have you allowed the presence and the power of God to have his way in your life today? I know it's just early in the morning. It's, it still hasn't become noon yet, but the power of God isn't waiting on any time frame. The power of God wants to come in as soon as we open our eyes. It was the power 
power of God that kept us in our sleep last night. And it's the power of God that woke us up this morning. So why not let the power of God continue in our lives by allowing the power of God to guide you throughout your day. Depend upon the power of God. But it means that we've got to be willing and receptive to the spirit of God. Yes, it means that we've got to be receptive and willing to receive the power and the spirit of God. Yes, when they sat in that room that day, it shows that they were willing. And as the cloven tongues of fire began to descend upon each one of them, it shows that they were receptive to receiving the Holy Spirit. They were receptive to receiving the power and the presence of God. Are you receptive to receiving the power and the presence of the Lord today? There are some times in our life, I believe, where we don't want the power of God to be present because we know we're about to get into some things. But we got to make sure that we understand if you're a believer, God always needs to be in you. Yes, God is there in the indwelling power, but you got to make sure that you're asking God on a daily basis to fill you with the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. Fill us, oh God, every day with your power. Fill us, oh God, every day every day with the purpose that you have for our life. Fill us every day, God, with the power that we might carry out your will. And when we get that empowerment on a daily basis, we're ready to face the world. When we get that empowerment, we're ready to go out and face whatever's waiting on us out there in, behind, beyond the doors of our houses. When we understand that the power of God is there for us, if we would just be receptive and tap into it and be willing to let that power guide us and lead us. Yes, we got to make sure that we have been empowered and equipped for life and for service. Yes, we must live a power dependent life. You've been equipped for life and for service, but a lot of the living that we do needs to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes, if we're going to live, let us live under the power of the Holy Spirit. If we're going to serve, let us serve under the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we're going to live a life dependent, let us be dependent upon the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Some people develop a dependency in life. Yeah, they develop a dependency upon alcohol. They develop a dependency upon drugs. They develop a dependency upon relationships. But I want you to understand today, if you got to live a dependent life, make sure that it's a life dependent upon the power of God. It's because God is coming to your life. It's because God is the wants you to be dependent upon him. If we learn to live a life dependent upon God, learn to live a life that is a dependent upon the power of God. I've learned in my life that the power of God can carry me further than any of the power that I could ever display. The power of God can get me out of the places that some of the world tried to trap me in. The power of God can get me through some situations and some circumstances that I couldn't get myself through. But if I learn to trust and depend and lean on God. Yes, the song says, learn to lean on the everlasting arm of our Lord and Savior. We got to learn to lean into God, learn to lean on God and let God empower us. And sometimes you got to let the power of God carry you because you can't carry yourself. When I understand it in Acts 1 and 8, it says, Be, but receive you the power of the Holy Spirit when he comes upon you. And when he touches you, you shall receive power that you might be able to be my witnesses. Yes, that power comes that we might be witnesses for God. Yes, when we understand that God has given us his power, he's given us that authority. He's given us the thing that we need the most. Yes, he breathed upon us. Has the spirit of God touched you today? Has the spirit of God breathed upon you today? to empower you for the day that is ahead of you. I know it's Sunday and we say nothing happens on Sunday, but you don't know what you're in for today. You don't know what challenges facing you today. And just like Sister Melinda testified to earlier, you don't know what's going to happen in your life today. You need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Every day we leave out of our houses, we don't know if we're coming back or not. But if we go out with the power of the Holy Spirit, if we go out in the power of God, we stand a better chance because God is on our side. We've got the power of God active in our life. I'm dependent upon the power. I'm dependent upon the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide me. I'm dependent upon the Holy Spirit to get me through my day because I can't make it by myself. So I learned to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God that I can experience the true presence and the true purpose of Pentecost. But not only must we experience the power of the Holy Spirit, we also must make sure that we experience the Pentecost purpose. Yes, there is a purpose for Pentecost. Just like there was a purpose for the, the festivals and, and there was a purpose for the things that they were doing during that time in the Old Testament. 
there is a purpose for Pentecost. And that purpose is for us to experience the power of God that we might be his witnesses. Yes, the power of God has come into our lives that we might be his witnesses. As, as we are witnesses to God, as we are witnesses to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can fulfill the purpose of the Lord. One of the things that I want us to see that the text shows us, it said that they were in that one room and they were on one accord and they were gathered together. The drawing power of the Holy Spirit, it has a, a unifying source to it. Yes, it has a way of, of unifying us. It has a way of drawing us together. But not only drawing us together, it has a way of, of drawing others to us. If you look at verses 5 and 6, it said that when they began to speak in those known languages, and it, and it said that others began to hear them, and they said they, become to, they began to come out, and they began to gather around the disciples. And they began to say to themselves, how is it that we hear them speaking in our native languages? Yes, these were unlearned and uneducated men, but, but they were speaking in our known tongues and languages. Yes, it was like somebody being able to speak French, but you've never gone to school to, to learn French. It's like somebody being able to speak Chinese, but you've never gone to school to learn how to speak Chinese. And God has given you the ability to speak to someone in French or Chinese. Yes, these men began to hear the men of God and the women of God in that time speaking in their own languages. And as they heard each individual speaking in their own language, it began to amaze them, but it had a drawing power to it. It began to draw them into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It began to, to draw them to the message that was being delivered on that day. Do you have any drawing power? We've got to ask ourselves, is there any drawing power in my life? Do I have the ability to draw lost souls to me? Do I have the ability to draw those who are seeking the Savior? And we need to make sure that we've been empowered, but we've got to also make sure that we're fulfilling the purpose of Pentecost. And the purpose of Pentecost is drawing people to a, a unified relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know some of us can still getting caught up on the tongues thing. And we're still thinking that it's about the tongues, but it wasn't about the tongues. It was about the message. Yes, they were speaking in the languages that the men knew and the people knew that were there. They were coming from 16 different nationalities. And as they came from all these different nationalities, the word of God was being heard in their language. See, it wasn't just about them speaking in the languages or the tongue. It was about them hearing the message. Yes, it was about the message being empowered. It was about the message having drawing power. It's about the message having a unifying power that brought all of these souls together. And it said that they began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because they said Peter began to stand up and preach when they said these people must be drunk. But Peter said it's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's not time for that type of activity. These men are under the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you under the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Are you under the power of the Holy Spirit to the point that he wants to speak through you and have a unifying message drawing souls into his kingdom? Are you, do you have that drawing power that will draw lost souls and sinners to you that you might be able to share a word with them? Do you have that drawing power that you can draw those hurting souls to you that you might be able to tell them that there's healing for their souls? Yes, the message was being spoken but the question was have you been touched to be able to speak the message that God wants to speak through you the message has been spoken to those who have already been touched yes it was through the ones that have already been touched by the power of God that the message of God was delivered and because that message of God was delivered it went out to all of those 16 different nationalities and they heard the message of God they heard the message the gospel of Jesus Christ and as they began to understand that they were being witnessed to. It said that Peter began to preach the gospel. Peter began to share the good news of Jesus Christ. He began to talk about the death of Christ. He began to talk about the resurrection of Christ. He began to talk to them about giving their life to God. And as they began to hear the message, did you open blinded eyes? That's what Peter was doing. He was open eyes that had been blinded 
by sin. And he was opening those old souls that had been sick for so long. He was doing it all under the power of God. He was doing it all because it was the purpose for the coming of the Holy Spirit. It was the purpose and the power of Pentecost that the gospel message might be preached, that souls might be saved. And on that day, thousands of souls came to the faith because Peter preached a powerful message under the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Have you experienced the fullness of the Spirit today? I'm simply asking you, have you let God breathe on you today? Have you let God breathe upon your life? And if you haven't, I encourage you to accept the Holy Spirit into your life. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, that you might have the power of God in you and that God might breathe on you, empowering you to be a messenger for him, to be empowered that you might share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. If you're not positioned in Christ, you got to check your position, check your position and make sure that you are obeying the word of God and that you're walking in faith with God. John said, check to see if you are in the faith. Yes, when you understand, you got to check yourself to make sure that you are positioned in Christ. True Pentecost is receiving power, power to live right, power to talk right, power to walk right, power to walk with God. That's what the true purpose and the power of Pentecost is, that we might walk with God empowered and then we might lead others to walk with him in an empowered way. True Pentecost purpose is about communicating the message of Christ. Yes, the message of grace and salvation. You see, the true power of Pentecost is about what happens in the sanctuary. It's about what happens after the sanctuary. Yes, we come to the sanctuary that we might celebrate God, that we might worship the Lord. That's what worship is all about on Sunday morning. It's really about worship. And as we worship God and as we magnify him and as we glorify his, his holy name, he empowers us on a daily basis that we might be able to come and worship him. He empowers us on a daily basis to be able to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Yes, but when we come to the sanctuary, we don't just leave our power there. But we take it with us when we leave the sanctuary. It's not just about coming on Sunday. It's not just about once a year celebrating a Pentecost Sunday. But it's about being empowered every day of our life. It's about understanding how the cross and the resurrection and Pentecost all play together in our lives. Yes, it's about the cross, the resurrection and Pentecost all working together. Yes, when I understand it's the cross that frees me. It's the resurrection that gives me life's power. And yes, it's the Pentecost that gives me the power to access the freedom and the life through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that led me to Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that has me to help me to accept the saving work of Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that helps me to be empowered that I might share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. If you've not been empowered today, ask God to fill you with the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. Ask God to come into your life and save your soul. If you got Jesus in your life, you got the power that you need because God has sent his Holy Spirit into the earth realm. All you got to do now is walk by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Walk by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And as we walk by the power and the presence of God, we walk in the glorious power that we could ever have. And that is that glorious power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can lead you and guide you through this life. The Holy Spirit can have you witness and become out a powerful witness. The Holy Spirit can have you share the gospel, the good news, the message of Jesus Christ and souls coming to the kingdom. Because that's what it's all about. It's not about running and jumping. It's not about shouting and hollering. But it's about being empowered to win souls for the kingdom. Yes, it's nice to be able to shout for the Lord, but the Holy Spirit doesn't just make you shout. Yes, we talk about all the things that the Holy Spirit made me do this and the Holy Spirit made me do that. What the Holy Spirit really wants to make you do is share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit really wants us to be empowered that we might win souls for the kingdom because that's what it's really all about. People are out here sick, but if they can be sick and be shouting, but they can still be sick and shouting in sin. But we need to make sure that they're in the body of Christ. We need to make sure that they have their souls saved. Yes, we can help people to get healed and we can open blinded eyes, but it's better to put a soul in the kingdom of God because once that soul is in the kingdom of God, it won't matter if they're blind or not. It won't matter if they're ill in their body or not. They've got the ultimate healing in their life and that is the healing of their soul. That Jesus Christ has
has come into their life. Aren't you ready today to experience the true power of Pentecost? Aren't you ready today to have a true Pentecost experience? Aren't you ready today for God to empower you that you might serve him in his kingdom? Aren't you ready today that God might be a blessing in your life so that you can serve the purpose of his kingdom? When I understand that the Pentecost is not just about coming together and, and experiencing power, but it's experiencing power for a purpose. And that purpose is to be a witness for Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Wherever you are, wherever you have a sphere of influence, wherever God may take you, you've been empowered to be a witness. So experience Pentecost every day, not just once a year, not just once every seven days, but experience Pentecost every day of your life because it's about the empowerment of God coming into your life, positioning you, empowering you, and then showing you purpose, the purpose of sharing the gospel, the good news of Christ. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you've not accepted Christ. You can start by, first of all, being positioned in Christ. We all need to be positioned in Christ. That means we all need to be saved. You can't stand before God in your own righteousness. You must stand before God in a manner that is acceptable to him. He's provided that way. It's through his son, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross at Calvary, covering our sin debt. But you have to be willing to accept and receive that. You have to be willing to accept his death in your place. If you're willing to accept the death of Christ on the cross at Calvary to cover your sin debt, won't you pray this prayer with me? Father, it's in the name of Jesus that I come to you. First of all, God, I want to admit that I am a sinner and that I've fallen short of your grace. I've fallen short of your standard. And I ask, Lord, that you would forgive me Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses, my iniquities. Forgive me, oh God, for the wrong that I've done. And then, God, I pray that you would come into my life, save me, and fill me, God, with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And God, as you fill me and as you empower me, I'll be a witness for your kingdom. Father, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for positioning me in Christ. I thank you, God, for empowering me. And I thank you, God, for giving me purpose. The purpose of sharing the gospel, the good news message of Christ. So that I can save other souls and bring them into your kingdom. Father, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, why don't you drop us a line at WesleyOnMain at Yahoo.com. That's Wesley on Main at Yahoo.com to let us know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You're now positioned in the body of Christ. You now empowered to serve in the body of Christ. Now fulfill your purpose and share the gospel, the good news of Christ. Amen. <music>